Emma, so nice to see you again. So nice to see you again. Um, and, and may I say, I saw the film and I am so excited and over the moon. And it was well, honestly just like an amazing really? film. Oh, I good. adored it. Hi. I absolutely adored it. Now, um, I, I watched it as a teenager. You mm -hmm. must have watched it as a child. I did, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, was there a bit of a pressure? I mean, was it, it must have been huge to, to play Belle. You know? Oh my God, it was like my childhood. It's like my friend's childhoods. Yeah. There's something like so sacred about those things that we, that have been part of our lives since before we can even remember. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's a yeah. lot of pressure. You don't want to mess that up. And, and huge pressure just for, from people out there. What mm. was it, 127 million people watched it in 24 hours, the trailer. When it came out, do you know this? Is it that high? 127 million people. No pressure, love. No pressure. No, no pressure. No one's going to see it. But it's going to be fine. There's a massive buzz out there. There really oh. is. Uh, Dan and I used to joke a lot. Actually, we used to make each other laugh. Like, mm. you know, you have days where you're where you're feeling really confident about your singing voice, or yeah, where you're yeah. feeling really good about that stunt you're going to do on the horse, or whatever else. And there are other days when you have complete crisis of confidence. Like, no. And we would laugh and be like, "Well, it's all right. It's not like anyone's going to see it." Oh yeah. Ha -ha. Oh yeah. Um, so <laughs> no, it's true. And you know, and and it's not. Just other pe pressure from other people. It's pressure mm. from myself because I just like, I just love her. I just think she's one of the ultimate heroines. And she really is. You just got to do her right. You, you know, got to got to do her justice. Yeah. Speaking uh, speaking of Dan Stevens, uh, was, yes. was that a joy working with him? Oh, such a joy. Yeah. He's such a lovely man. He seems it. Excuse my naivety here, right? But I don't know because it's the technology now is so incredible. Yeah. Was he sitting beside you? Was that? like makeup or how does it right. work? Right, okay, so work? I'll try and give you like the mm. basic. So what we would do is we would shoot a scene yeah. with Dan in kind of like a beast kind of, he'd have things to make him bigger and taller okay. and whatever else, yeah. but it would be his face and he'd have dots on them. And then at the end of the day, we would go and shoot all of the scenes again, but just his face, we'd have his facial expressions. And then the CGI would be done later of his face with his facial features. So yeah, it was amazing. I mean, it's like, it was a huge process, yeah. but when you watch the film, I think you'll agree, there's something yeah. so human and the like the detail and the expressions of his face Beyond, are just like... His facial like, expressions as a beast? I know. Are just absolutely brilliant. I know, absolutely so brilliant. good. So I mean, it yeah, was totally worth it. Um, but it was a bit of a crazy process. Yeah, I bet, I bet. Um, working with it, so you had Emma Thompson, Ian McKellen, Luke Evans, you McGregor. I mean, yeah, a I know. plethora of stars out there. Yeah. What was that like in work, working with them? In fact, did you work with? Because some of that would have been animated as well, wasn't it? So how yeah. Did that so work? a lot of it was animated. So a lot of the time, I was talking to like a teacup or a hairbrush <laughs> or like you know whatever else. And then there was this one fabulous scene at the end. Where obviously, everyone transforms. Sure. And then I'm looking around the room and I'm like, this cast is insane. Like <laughs> this is pretty cool. <laughs> like you know. Um, so we had everyone there for that. But yeah, a lot of the time I was quite lonely, I have to say. It was me and a load of inanimate objects. Oh, that makes me sad. I know, I was like. I don't, you and a random hairbrush and things like that. that yeah. that's, that's not good. Just talking um, to myself. You spoke about Belle. Being, yes. You, know, she, you really resonated with her, didn't mm, you? You, you, know, you really yeah. felt a connection. Mm -hmm. Is it true? So you didn't want to do Cinderella, is that correct? Because it. She wasn't quite right for you. Yeah, they, they offered me Cinderella, and mm. I was just like, this is, it just doesn't feel right for me. This yeah. isn't the right one for me. Yeah. And I didn't know they were gonna make Beauty and the Beast. Mm. But then um, when, when Beauty and the Beast came back around, I was like, oh my God, you know, I'll do anything. Mm. You know, she's just like, she's so fierce yeah. and so smart yeah. and like, just, I just think she's the coolest. Yeah. And um, yeah, so when that came around, I was like, do anything. I'll do, it. I'll do anything. Did yeah. you work with the director as well to make her even more fierce? More yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we really like we wanted to pad out a bit of Belle's backstory. Sure. And so we wanted to give her a bit more, yeah, just more backstory, more depth. Mm -hmm. And so we made her, it was originally her dad in the original movie that was more of the kind of like crazy inventor. Yeah. But we actually thought that that story was brilliant for Belle because sure. it kind of explained why she didn't really fit into the village and why everyone thought she was a bit mad. Mm -hmm. And it also just really kind of like emphasized this thing that she was just sort of a bit ahead of, ahead of her time. Yes. And, um, and we also wanted this story of the fact that she wanted to teach and that she wanted to, yeah, she tries mm -hmm. to teach this little girl to read, but. I love know, the village's disgust that you have it. Oh, they no, to <laughs> I like, know. Uh -huh. They were affronted, I tell you, yeah. Well, that's <laughs> what's so funny is like, and th we've seen this throughout history is yeah. that like books are revolutionary. Mm -hmm. Books empower people. Yeah. Books yeah. like c can allow people to see the possibility in the world of mm -hmm. what they can achieve and what they can do and like, 
they tried to keep books away from women for a long time. It's true. They were like, yeah, let's yeah. not let books yeah. get into the hands of women I because that would be you were doing something too that, dangerous oh, yeah because <laughs> that's the thing there's lots of comparisons being made between you and Belle mm. obviously she's you know lots of books she's obviously moved mm -hmm. to the library and things like that yeah I love the fact that recently because I know I've spoken to you before about your book club but you've been I love this have you been putting books around underground <laughs> and things? yeah this is genius <laughs> tell me how this came about it's <laughs> so fun so I found this amazing project yeah. it existed before I came on board but this wonderful woman had we'd been sitting on the tube and had been taking the tube to work for years uh -huh. and had seen that no one was, everyone was just looking at their iPhones yeah, now. No one was reading do. books know, anymore. Know, know. It made her really sad. So mm. she was like, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to start mm -hmm. writing to book publishers and saying, will you give me a certain number of copies that I can distribute on the tube? Yeah. She started calling it Books Underground. And I was like, this is just the best idea. And so um, it's me and then I often find, I call them book fairies. Right. So I find, <laughs> I find volunteers that are willing to sneak around different parts of the world and uh -huh. distribute um, you know, feminist feminist books um, in public public places. Give me a shout, I'll do it. Will you? Oh, I'll Will totally you be a volunteer? Yeah, oh I'll my God, that's there. great in all seriousness. I love that. Yeah, whatever your newest tube stop is. Um, that's yeah, amazing. Yeah, so we do these I big do, book I do drops. Think there's a definite, um, Reverse kind of happening with technology and books as well. I feel an awful lot of people are reverting back to books. Yeah, there's for nothing, sure. There's something about holding there's something about, a book, oh isn't my there? god, I'm the same way. Yeah. I drive, I drive my friends completely mad because mm. we'll go away on a trip, and they're like, "You've bought seven books with you." The yeah. weight of that is just ridiculous. I'm like, I know, but do you I leave just them? do you leave? But I always I, do that. Yeah, I that's a nice thing to do, around, and yeah. I always try to like. Mm pass them off and be like this, this is, is amazing or whatever else and look after so that's don't true the sun. and, and i love seeing people's like underlinings and yeah. little squiggles and absolutely yeah. absolutely mm. um no uh, you, you spoke before about singing mm -hmm. um, i have to say you you were brilliant in that oh, it was cracking was oh. it a navi a navi sing though I mean, oh my god it was so, i can't even still. tell you how nerve-wracking it was mm. i mean there, there were like a few moments where i had a real um crises of confidence yeah. just because it's something that I've always done and yeah. I always love to do it mm -hmm. and my family know I can do it and my friends know that I do it yeah. um, but it was like wow is my voice gonna hold up yeah. in a, in one of the biggest musicals of all time like sure. you know sure. am I gonna be able to do this in front of 200 300 people on a film set mm -hmm. am I gonna be able to do it for 12 hours a day yeah. you know Wow. So the, the three months prep was really, really important. And I worked with a wonderful singing coach called Claire, Claire Underwood. And, you know, I think she was part psychiatrist, part psychologist, part <laughs> singing teacher. You know, part of it was just being like, OK, all right, Watson, you can do this. Yeah. Um, but I, I, you know, once I got into it, I just loved it. Sure. Like, I want to do a musical every day for the rest oh, of my good. life. Like, there's so much joy in it. And yeah. like, the music is just... I don't know about you, but when I hear that song Beauty and the Beast, I just melt. I just like, so you know, it's been stuck in my head and my other half's head for the past 24 hours. So that's uh, all we've been okay. singing. So there you go. It's, it's, all, it's good. all good. It's, it's true, though. Uh, you say you love a musical. Is it true? Did, did you turn down La La Land for, for Beauty and the Beast as well? You know, it's one of those things where it's like, with a movie like Beauty and the Beast, mm. you know, it's like three months prep. It's yeah. like three or four months shooting. It's in the UK. Oh. You're in or you're out. Exactly. And exactly. I was like, I kind of got to be all in. And so this was really where my heart was. And I knew I had to fully commit yeah. and make sure that I did this I'll be honest to the best you, of my I, ability. I judge a film by how much I smile and do this. At the end. Do you, and and you did lots of smiling. Lots of, yes. Well, then there you go. It's a really funny film. That's the interesting thing as well. There's lots of funny bits in it you as well. You forget that when you watch levels. it. But when you watch yeah. the animation, yeah. there's... Um, no, right. It works on so many different it levels. Does. And for me, like... It's so important to have films that just like a pure joy, yeah, exactly. and this—that's what this film is. It's pure joy. Did you have to learn to ride a horse as well on that as well? Because it's quite a bit of horse. Riding. I did, yeah. So I—I've um, never ridden a horse before, no. and so I was like, okay, this oh, is yeah. what I mean about the prep. I mean, yeah. I really went into like essentially a bell boot camp. Uh -huh. I was riding three <laughs> or four times a week, uh -huh. singing four times a week, dancing three or four times a week. I mean, I was manic. I was so hectic, but um. I loved it. I I was not one of these girls when she was younger that was like, I really want a pony, like no, no. please I want I want a mm -hmm. horse. I wasn't really interested, I was a bit mm -hmm. like, mm, okay. Yeah. But then I totally fell in love with my horse and I actually really got into it, which yeah. I was really surprised about because That's I wasn't crazy. expecting that. But it's very um it's very meditative because mm -hmm you really have to concentrate and you can't be thinking about anything else when you're on a horse. You yeah. have to be thinking about what you're doing. And so it's quite zen in a weird way. 
outfit wise yes. the iconic yellow dress was that yellow beautiful dress. to wear and wonderful <laughs> oh my god my five-year-old self when i put the dress on for the first time was like oh my god yeah so good i mean it's so iconic isn't it yeah beyond the, the, the amount iconic. of people that when i mentioned beauty and the beast are like yeah. what's the yellow dress like yeah I was like, that must worry. be your favourite outfit. Ever. Yeah, she had some great outfit. I like the little knickerbockers you had. On. Oh, thanks. Yeah, well, this, my thinking was again: if you've got a mount and dismount a horse, you're right. You need something underneath, you are or right. you're in trouble. You're right. um, um, <laughs> but yeah, no, I think the dress. We like the cool thing is that yellow dress yeah. in our version carries Belle through really right, mm. like right to the end of the movie, to the point where she like gets on her horse to. I don't want to give anything away, but no, anyway, no, no, but, no, exactly. but we wanted to make the dress like have this slight like feeling of like a, a um, like a coat of armor sort of mm. dress. Like it's really beautiful, sure. but it feels very heroic as yeah, well absolutely, somehow. Absolutely. Do you know what I mean? Um, it, that dress is amazing. I have to say the things you've been wearing recently as well. Off oh, the chart. This is gorgeous. Oh, thank you. One of the you. finest. And thank the, you, thank the Louis Vuitton dress. Thank fantastic. you, thank you, you thank you. Um, so yeah, congratulations on that. One last thing. Yes. Your your doll went and got a bit of flack, right? Now it what I do, what I do on TV is I do. We call it the mark over, right? What okay. So this is what I've gone and done. I've oh gone no. and given Whoa, Belle done. doll. I turned Belle into festival Belle for you. Ah! Now what are we thinking? <laughs> It's and I've got the phone in. I got the phone in because last time the phone rang. She's got some so very I'm, chic gladiator sandals is, going I'll on. Be honest it's with very you, Kate Moss. I got a little bit too into this. Yeah, I got. This a, is yeah, amazing. I had a great day yesterday of, of wow. dressing dolls and watching Beauty and the Beast. There we go. Wow, so, this is amazing. I have. To, I love that you've kept my freckles in. Yes. I feel very yeah, yeah, yeah. like. But we chopped a bit off. You this know, is we, beautiful. Yeah, she so like. <laughs> it's Belle that's ready to go to a festival. Uh -huh. you know? Ready for Coachella. Ready for Coachella. Darling, it's a joy to have you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. This is so fabulous. <laughs> thank you, thank you.